couple years ago, I made a video that some uh, subscribers to the channel will notice is no longer up on the channel. And that is a video that I made describing the low G clarinet. And one of the reasons I took it down is it just wasn't a very good video. And today I'm going to kind of redo that video and re-talk about the low G clarinet. Now, you're asking yourself, why? what is a G clarinet? Well, clarinets come in all shapes and sizes. Typically, we're used to the B-flat clarinet. This is your standard everyday clarinet. But, if you know much, you'll know that you can get a larger one in A, smaller one in E-flat, alto, bass, contra. Uh, this, however, the G clarinet, is a little bit more unusual. It is pitched a minor third below the B flat. Therefore, it is quite a bit longer than the B flat clarinet. In fact, the bells are lined up and you can see just how much difference there is in length. Because it's a minor third lower, it'll play a minor third lower. So the lowest sounding note on the G clarinet is a low B natural sounding, of course as opposed to the lowest note on the B flat clarinet, which sounds a D. One other thing you'll notice about this particular clarinet is it is in a German system meaning that uh, a standard clarinet player really is not going to be able to play this very well. And I struggle to play this uh, particular clarinet, but it's not necessarily because of the fingering system. It's because it's not a well-made instrument. Um, and I'll get to that here in a little bit. So, what is the history of this clarinet? It goes back nearly as long as the B-flat clarinet, back to the 1700s, this clarinet was called a clarinet d'amore. There's also a clarinet d'amore in the key of A-flat, half a step smaller than this. And uh, in woodwind terms, when we use the term d'amore, which is just Italian for of love, so the clarinet of love, it just means uh, an instrument a minor third lower than the standard instrument. Most cases, that's going to be A, with the oboe de more and the flute de more, both being in A, a minor third below the C flute and the C oboe. Well, because their standard clarinet is in B flat, a minor third below that is in G. So, the clarinet de more. Uh, this, however, did not take off much in Europe. There are a few pieces by Mozart that use this instrument. In particular, um, it would have been an instrument that was extended a few extra notes down to low C, so that the lowest note on the, the instrument Mozart would have been writing would have been a concert G, right at the bottom of the bass clef. Essentially, a G basset horn. In fact, the original draft of Mozart's clarinet concerto was for the G clarinet. I will attempt to play a little bit of it in the original key, just the slow movement, and again, Please forgive me, this instrument is not great. Uh, I have to use a lot of alternate fingerings, even for something simple in the key of F. This is where the instrument fails. That those upper few notes in the upper clarina range, high A, B flat, and C, just do not come out. Without really good preparation, and that's one of the, the big downfalls of this particular G clarinet. Not all of them, but just this particular one. Uh, so we'll come back to that. So Mozart used it, and then. I have not been able to find really any other composers that took up this instrument. What did flourish, and still flourishes to this day, is in Turkey. And a few other uh, countries in the Balkans as well. We use the low G clarinet. This is the uh, standard 
clarinet you'll see in Turkey and used a lot in Turkish pop and jazz music. And I, I think one of the reasons for that is its ability to play more microtones. Because of the simpler fingering system, the German fingering system, um... <laughs> It's super easy to do microtones on here and get a lot more inflections than I can on a standard boom system clarinet. So, where I like this instrument, not this instrument, but the, the concept of the G in reality is the fact that this is really the true alto of the clarinet family. It is a, a major third above our standard alto clarinet. So this is in the key of E flat. This is in the key of G. And then we've got our standard instrument in the key of B flat. Well, guess what? If we play all three at the same time, we get a lovely major chord. So if we consider this as our soprano voice, Soprano, mezzo-soprano-ish. This becomes our alto, the G clarinet. Our alto now gets to be into the role it deserves, which is tenor. Which is where it's always sh should be. So to give you an uh, example, here's the, the very lowest range of the alto clarinet, excepting the low E flat, which is not found on either of those. <laughs> The same thing on the G clarinet. And now the same thing on the B flat clarinet. And you can hear there's a real marked tonal difference between the three sizes. As a composer, I've toyed with the idea of using one or two of these in my works, but because my experiences with this particular instrument are so uh, negative, I have not done it yet. Uh, and partly is that it is very difficult to find one of these in the more modern French or Berm system. There are a couple makers that do it. Orsi out of Milan will make one. I believe there's a German maker that does. And Steve Fox in Canada will make a French system G. But with this instrument, and I'll just talk about a few uh, things on here. First thing you'll notice is I've got this weird bell on here. Um, this is, a, of course, an aftermarket bell. The actual bell I've got is here. Um, I've just switched this out today. It gives it a little bit more weight, a little bit more resonant sound. Um, I've done a lot of altering on this particular instrument. I've ground down a couple keys uh, just to get it to fit under the hands a little bit better. It's ergonomically very poorly designed. Uh, this clarinet, and I don't have one right now, uh, I feel absolutely has to have a, a neck strap because it's so much heavier than the B-flat clarinet. In fact, you'll notice it with uh, without the bell attached, it's the same length as my alto clarinet. So it's a really long instrument. It's heavy, it's awkward, and it needs a little bit of support on it. If there were a way to attach a peg, that might even be a really beneficial solution. But of course, that I'm not going to put a peg on here. By the way, this is a uh, Chinese-made hard rubber instrument. Uh, please don't ask uh, exactly what brand it is. Because it's out of the Chinese market, it is completely unbranded. Uh, so I do not know which factory it came out of. Though I have some suspicions. I can't really comment on exactly where it came from. Uh, I may do a separate video talking about the, the key work on it, if there's some interest in it. Um, but some particular faults on this instrument. 
Um, the throat tones in particular are very, very nasty to deal with. So I'll start on open G. That's B flat and you just heard four notes. I, I, I'm, I haven't figured out if this is a design flaw of this instrument or is a characteristic of all German system instruments, but the throat keys are not interconnected. If somebody knows, please let me know. Um, because it's so long, this side B flat, E flat key gets in the way. In fact, this is half the length of what it was originally. Originally, it was down to about here. And with it being so long, you couldn't grip it well. These keys over here are designed very uh, poorly. In fact, this key in particular, with this key on, this is an alternate E flat, A flat lever. It's the only clarinet I have that has it. It's the only clarinet I have that doesn't need it. Uh, this key is almost impossible to hit because of how your fingers have to stretch. Notice the awkward distance that my left hand is having to do just to get to that key. And notice how straight my ring finger is. The upper register, uh, the first little bit of it, the clar uh, clarino range is okay. <laughs> Those notes I'm really having to, to force out, to struggle out. It will go up a little bit higher. I can get all the way up to a high C, but it's not pleasant. And that's just an F, and I'm going to stop there because above that, the, the, the notes do not respond well. And because it is so much longer... You hear the fingers are so much more spread, uh, you have the the ability to squeak really easily. Not really ability, but it happens. Um, I've actually talked to uh, clarinet maker Steve Fox about it. He, you know, he, he's of the, the consideration, the, the opinion that the instrument this side, side almost really needs to have closed uh, keys, closed uh, tone holes, and I tend to agree it's uh this is a larger stretch than it is on my bassoon it's I, the largest stretch i've ever had really on any woodwind instrument uh, aside from something say like uh, a bass recorder that just because of its ancient nature is going to have but even this bass recorder the finger stretches are smaller than on the g clarinet even when I played great bass recorder in college, it wasn't quite as much of a stretch as this is. So it's it's uncomfortable to play as designed. Um, but this, like I said, is really the, the true alto voice of the clarinet family. It's one of the most unusual members. Um, I can see it having a lot of potential. Um, but it's got to be taken up by more serious manufacturers uh, because this instrument just ain't going to cut it. So if you have any questions about the G clarinet, um, please let me know. Uh, please don't comment on my, uh, my atrocious playing on it. Remember, this instrument is beyond difficult to play. I, I can play... the. All the stuff that I did on my other clarinets just fine, but on this instrument, it's such a struggle that most of the time it just stays out as decoration. So that's uh, my little rant on the uh, G clarinet, the true alto clarinet.